Hi everyone, here is Boris Evro with a video uh, that will review my most recent book published uh, from Quality Chess Publishing House as well as here in Forward Chess. So here I would like to give you an example how it works on the platform which called called like, Forward Chess. That's uh, quite an experience, quite an interesting experience for me. Basically, uh, I apologize in advance, but I'm uh, basically a beginner, beginner user here. It's literally second time I'm uh, using this platform. I, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but somehow, uh, like I, I never used to work on this platform because I mean it was much more convenient to have like chess-based files. But you know, if you don't have chess-based files with you and you travel somewhere, and uh, it's like. I mean, it's perfectly, it works actually perfect because, you know, here's the actual copy of my book and it's 600, almost 600 pages. It's uh, to be exact, it's 592 pages uh, where I covered, you know, dynamic, dynamic system. So this is my latest, it's called Grandmaster Repertoire 2B Dynamic Systems. Um, so here, like if we, we see this forward chess app that I open on my laptop, uh, as it goes without saying that it can be also used on uh, your phones as well as iPads, so that makes it very convenient. You uh, obviously cannot carry out the 600 pages with you all over, but here, like when, when you have some time, you travel somewhere, you can basically open your uh, you can open your iPhone or laptop and uh, just just read my books. It's uh, it's very convenient. Uh, by by the way, I I have heard a lot from different people my students or like chess community they like they had this announcement well Boris your book is on forward chess we are going to purchase fine I mean I'm glad that's that's another uh, that's another platform where you can buy my book so I'm excited about this but somehow I I really never use this uh, I just mostly was working with my chess base files as well as obviously the real copy of the book so here how uh, how it looks like forward chess once you get into this app uh, so you have basically a library i i pressed on library and there are there are books that you basically purchased uh, so here you can see uh, from one to six is basically all my books in general i published 10 books uh, on uh, quality chess uh, with the help of quality chess but uh, but here we have only six because i think like my my first d4 initial series uh, have been released in 2008 so there the, the were two volumes 2008 2009 i think it's outdated and there is a second edition which basically we are going to talk about today so pretty much it's the, the books are kind of like irrelevant uh also like it's only two books two volumes here we have four four volumes it's more, much more details and of course the theory uh, has been evolving all the time and that's much more uh, updated information here in the books so six books uh, i mean overall as i mentioned it's 10 books it's really great time working with quality chess like really fun I enjoyed a lot my collaboration with the uh, jacob agar john show and all the guys who have been working on editing my books it was really a pleasure so um now uh, in this video i'm going to review my very latest book which called grandmaster repertoire 2b dynamic systems uh, how they decided to call dynamic system is hard to say but we're going to talk about different openings uh, which not not exactly the mainstream openings but nevertheless very important so so here uh, so basically the, this is a uh, well the first page and and we are moving right away to the content of this book so it's a uh, it's all starts with the Stonewall. So this is the first chapter. Uh, the the play starts. The, the first chapter is Stonewall. So you can see uh, in the beginning I'm covering uh, the line with Bishop e7, which is uh, uh, not the main line. So I'm talking about in this position. I'm talking about uh, the setup with Bishop e7. That you know we, we, you can find a lot of games, but overall. I don't see the reason for black to develop bishop on e7 when bishop can be developed on d6, right? I mean, it's like more natural, it's more active. Uh, actually, I have a lot of respect to Stonewall, uh, Stonewall system. It's uh, 
it's like really a reliable opening very positional uh, very hard to break uh, to break for the systems like for this pawn structure and uh, what is the advantage of like having especially this book that here you have a coverage of the openings that you cannot really find a lot of material on these openings like nowadays i mean usually i'm talking about we, we are talking about mainstream lines you know slav grunfeld king's indian but here you can find the lines that not covered like very very well in general in in chess literature so that from this point the book should be extremely extremely helpful and as one of my close chess friends mentioned once so the the one of the biggest values of my book is that in sidelines or not the mainstream lines uh the the coverage can be can be almost forever you know like my point is that if you if we are talking about mainstream openings it's obviously like a lot of improvements the theory evolves all the time but if we are talking about like you know not so popular openings or some sidelines then like once you have a good work it takes you throughout like many years or maybe even like forever and you never come back maybe just for memorization or some small updates so yeah so the, the this is the line i mean again like it's a it's a stone wall so bishop e7 now i mean it's just a normal like knight bd2 it's a it's a classical so knight a4 is covered i i guess the the main move uh will be in this position of course c6 which is this is what so-called stone wall and knight e5 uh i i think if i'm not mistaken the first volume it it was more of b3 uh, bishop b2 or bishop a3 idea now i have so-called uh, knights maneuvering like knights tango i mean some people call it so basically the idea that knight from d2 goes to a3 from e5 quite often goes to d3 and and that's a very nice grip all the center of like dark squares in the center and uh, you know white uh, white is doing great in my opinion but you know black remains very solid black remains very solid uh again as as i mentioned before probably not so much point to to play bishop e7 so why not to play bishop d6 which is the main line of the stone wall right so here we have uh, bishop d6 uh, variation which uh, goes here like i i want to start so as as i mentioned above the, the there could be some technical problems so i i need just to go up get to the position so bishop d6 here again like what what for the first time i would like to mention it's very convenient on the left side you have all the text from the book moves diagrams on the right side you can play play those moves on the board it's like what else you you need you know it's uh, it's super convenient super convenient so bishop d6 c4 c6 the initial position of stonewall now here like just want to i would like to mention very interesting story that uh, you know when first time i studied stonewall i remember how my coach told me you know boris i mean just make sure your knight never gets to c3 so your, your knight should go to d2 then eventually to f3 you, you know like we discussed in our previous slide so it's kind of like maneuvering the knight so knight d2 is heading to f3 knight from f3 e5 d3 uh, and and then suddenly in one of the tournaments i I, I saw the game of one of my very close close friends and he he played knight c3 and i'm like wait, wait a second how it's possible and he he was a strong well i mean he's still strong grandmaster and and his name is vitali golot uh, my, my good friend so he played knight c3 and he had a very nice game and i got like interesting what's this idea i talked with him and he he mentioned that well that's an interesting line i mean he prepared this line he worked on this line he he found this quite interesting and you know i really like the line i really like the line it's um i i i covered this line in my first books like back in 2009 2008 and now i i stay with this line and in my opinion it's uh it's became slowly became one of the top lines uh, in this variation uh in, in against stonewall very interesting setup so knight c3 we, we play knight c3 queen c2 and what i like about this system there is a lot of flexibility in white setup so it depends what black is doing we we try to carry out different ideas so sometimes it can be uh rook b1 followed by b4 b5 attack sometimes it can be move like bishop g5 bishop f4 it goes without saying that uh, i mean it's we are always happy to see 
if uh, the stone wall structure collapses. I, I, I remember when I analyzed I always felt like I, I don't even need to pay too much attention. If the DC4 is played or let's say F5 is disappeared, so it's always favorable for white. So not surprisingly, this position, it still uh, remains like very favorable. So I, I guess the move, the, the main moves in this position. So here we have Queen C2, but, uh, pro probably more, more popular the moves like uh, Knight E4 or like Queen E7, obviously just a normal move in this position so so for instance if queen e7 played here in this position uh, bishop g5 is the line very interesting also like you don't see quite often that we give up dark squared bishop for the knight it's rather we are trying to exchange for the bishop on d6 and the the, the whole idea that in this position so the there, there is capture but uh, the main move is actually bishop f4 yeah, we we actually we actually we don't give up. I mean, sorry, was my, my my mistake. I I don't remember exactly all the lines. So the, in in fact, we come back bishop f4. So the idea was to provoke h6, and then whenever knight comes to e5, there will be a g6 square available for the knight or something for black to to defend against the threat knight g6. So so this is one idea. For instance, so as I mentioned, it's it's very flexible. So we take the move knight e4. Here we just go for the idea of b4 b5 so we prepare b4 b5 <clears throat> overall overall very very interesting in my opinion very like flexible play for white with a lot of ideas uh, again i would like just to repeat that i i have a lot of respect to stonewall it's not a bad opening at all um and uh, hopefully i i give a very nice coverage of white ideas here and uh, so now uh, another line that we, we in order to comp well, it's a second system basically. So there is this variation which called uh, classical classical line of um, Dutch. So where black is playing d66, probably the, the the less popular line. So it's basically this kind of position. So I the, there is some tricky move bishop before trying to play in the bogo style, uh, but I don't think it works like really well for black, especially taking into account that. White in this position can play knight d2, and I, I think like I came to conclusion that this knight d2 move is actually very, uh, very nice here and better than bishop d2. So I, I, I think it's relatively a new idea. I came up with this knight d2, knight h3. For those who are surprised with knight h3 move, it's actually very, very common, uh, common thematic move in uh, in Dutch general Dutch pawn structure. It's very popular in Stonewall, uh, maybe at least less popular in Leningrad but I mean it's always an option so that's an interesting line that I suggested here some some kind of improvement to compare with my uh, my, my first edition so obviously bishop e7 it's a it's a main line uh, not so many changes here so well okay here b6 it's very rare so actually the, the main move of course is d6 and that's the initial position of this classical uh, variation of Dutch so I I kind of like felt always that all this play with queen e8, queen h5, it's kind of like a little bit dubious because by having the fan, uh, fan keto against uh, against the systems, we we basically secure our king pretty well, so the attacking chances are not uh, very high. Even though probably Simon Williams has a different opinion about this, but nevertheless, I thought that in this position, uh, the main move, uh, the main move knight e4, I think. If I understand correctly, it's a separate, it's it's a separate chapter. So here it's covered knight c6 a5, very very easy play for white. We we just like we we play fianchetto and then obviously we prepare e4 break. So very easy play. So here actually that that's a different chapter where we get knight e4 coverage as well as queen a8. So as far as I understand, that was a little bit of sidelines. So now knight e4 coverage. So here I have some improvement. To compare with my first edition, uh, my line is knight e4, f4, knight d2, d5. That's pretty four sequence of moves. Obviously, after we we capture knight e4, f3, and uh, now this line has been quite popular. I mean, in general, in this Dutch, in this classical Dutch, knight c6 was the main move. If I'm not mistaken, here in this position, I uh i i had f4 in my, yeah it's basically written uh, here in the text so i had f4 and uh, some uh, some lines you know it's back 2009 obviously like black 
had time to improve and black significantly improved this line so now i uh, i'm basically changing in favor of e3 move and uh, was quite happy to to discover here that uh, white is having a nice position obviously knight on c6 is like a little bit misplaced bishop f6 so there was ju just normal development white is having a nice game and better chances so that's about a uh, classical line uh, a few words about classical line and here we are switching to like probably the most popular especially nowadays uh mo most popular line in dutch uh leningrad leningrad is um considered to be the opening which is uh, which is kind of like a little bit resembles king's indian but we are having pawn on a fight that there are some pros and cons obviously of having this pawn on a fight but it's considered to be very aggressive opening something let's say to play in must win situations and in general for those players who are looking for some uh, you know very complex game and let's say they need to play for a win um so my setup uh, with b3 still remains similar to my first edition i i really like it so the whole point is that um white maintains a lot of flexibility in the setup because uh after bishop b2 let's say knight can go to d2 sometimes sometimes c4 knight c3 it's uh, still i believe like very uh, very nice system i mean it's been quite popular i i i have noticed like a lot of grandmaster games here uh, maybe influenced by my book maybe not maybe just in general it's considered to be a good line so yeah there are uh, there are a lot of lines here yeah c6 knight a4 is probably some kind of like sidelines i believe like next chapter will be queen e8 um ju just a quick so, some some line here c6 so here for instance knight d2 is ca coming and and we play in this position so let's say we we are not uh having like move c4 we are waiting so maybe we don't need c4 maybe we'll switch to e4 right away so a lot of flexibility here so very interesting setup highly recommended so now main move main move here is queen e8 in in this chapter so you can see queen e8 move uh <clears throat> now after queen e8 so here's this position now, now this time so we we had the move knight d2 this time switching to c4 uh and and kind of like having set up now now the the, the question about knight c3 knight d2 is still open depends on the lines now i would like to mention like one specific idea here that uh it's one of the key points because when you go b3 bishop b2 one of the uh, thematic ideas for black is to deliver d5 so very important to understand always and also by the way in the previous move what's going on with e5 so uh e5 d5 uh, obviously he cannot he cannot take d5 and let's say but but there is this very very thematic knight fg7 so basically regain the pawn no questions about this but then in return we we have a very nice development so knight d5 is coming and uh, this position i guess like analyzed pretty well detailed commands white is better so uh, that's a few words about leningrad now we are moving towards uh different uh different opening which is uh so i guess like benoni systems the next it starts benoni system we have uh first of all we start uh, here with church benoni church benoni it's the the line where where you get more you get c5 d5 e5 setup um uh, I, I had like really nice experience when I played in Israel was active chess player I uh, one of my actually friends he he had this opening in his repertoire and I remember how I started with first game I lost and then I did some serious work and uh, after that it, it went like pretty well so what is happening in general what you need to remember so there are like two uh, major setups for black some people play some tricky lines here like starting maybe a6 or knight bd7 but in general it's between g6 and bishop e7 so in here uh, there is a coverage of uh, g6 now very interesting line so th this is some kind of like king's indian but even more close because there is a move c5 so my line here very interesting idea and i think like without this idea it's hard to um hard to play for advantage I, I mean well there are different setups but this idea is really really challenging so after h4 and by the way it's pretty classical idea against g6 bishop g7 sidelines not king's indian but just the sidelines h4 the idea h5 and there is a dilemma for black whether you allow h5 which is not nice 
or mo most people react h5 but then obviously g5 square is available for our pieces as well as f5 much more difficult to carry out because well h5 is hanging and as i mentioned before also uh, g5 square is not covered so so this is the line very i i believe very promising line for white and uh, as far as i know no changes so uh here we have yes church benoni main lines i guess main lines as we can see it's bishop e7 bishop e7 considered to be main line uh like the most popular so my setup again so something that i studied back then and it's covered in my first edition and covered as well here g3 well h5 is a very rare move so uh but well we need to know how to react so like castle is the main line uh, bishop g2 now knight goes somewhere i guess if this is not the main like everyone knows this kind of like regrouping knight bg7 knight a8 g6 knight g7 stuff like this so j just to show you the main line here knight e2 obviously we are very flexible not blocking the pawn f so that we in the future we can get a four so castle a6 just inserting a6 i guess but it's really doesn't matter just insertion a6 a4 then uh th then g6 is happening Oh, well a6 was like actually not not the main line g6 bishop h6 knight g7 so maybe there is bishop g5 idea i don't know but anyway uh anyway the move uh queen d2 is well very very good for us from positional perspective so he goes knight f6 king h8 knight g8 very common idea h3 covering g4 square king h8 now rook a2 e1 preparing for big fight in the center so f5 f4 a lot of tension in the center so we are well prepared for opening up everything because pawns on d5 pawn on d5 actually secures our big space advantage so that's Chech benoni uh so the, the the line the most important line to know rather with bishop e7 so next chapter we are talking about close benoni so here we have c5 e5 which is uh kind of without knight on f6 so it's a little bit similar but not exactly uh the point is that let's say in this position black potentially if let's say we play c4 and we just want to switch into like regular chess benoni that there is possibility to play move like c4 uh, well i'm sorry c4 bishop e7 and try and delay knight f6 but exchange dark square bishop with bishop g5 that usually helps black because overall black position is a little bit cramped so my line and i think i think it remains the same if i'm not mistaken bishop b5 check very very tricky idea uh, so we actually i believe white can benefit from not having pawn on c4 why because eventually knight can get there and we have much more play on the queen side potentially so uh obviously knight d7 bishop d7 so just to give you uh ex some exemplary line here what's going on knight d7 it's very important to insert a4 because otherwise a6 b5 comes uh, we obviously we don't want to give up the bishop uh, bishop e7 knight f3 normal development knight c3 castle castle so that's kind of like uh, probably the most popular position after bishop b5 and knight a8 just a normal idea and knight d2 so knight is heading to c4 so that's the whole point uh after knight is heading to c4 we will be ready either for a four break or even rook b1 before so they 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 all work really well for us so the, that's uh, like a few words about uh about closed benoni position so so we here the next chapter is like e6 move i don't see it quite often uh, re really i i wouldn't say even i i remember the lines well but uh the point after e6 we once again we take advantage of the fact that we are more flexible we are not forced to play c4 so my line is just knight c3 knight c3 and uh knight after knight f6 we play e4 and it's uh white enjoys like a very nice game especially taking into account that like as far as I understand ed5 runs into e5 very powerful meanwhile after d6 there is another surprise but we already common idea after the previous one bishop b5 now that that's not very popular like i 
I haven't seen the game in this line for, I don't know, for a long time. Uh, so here we have some, I guess, some rail lines, uh, as you can see, C5, D5, B5, like D F5, may maybe just like really, I would love quickly to mention in this position, uh, move F5, uh, where, in my opinion, I just provided some kind of like refutation. Uh, I, I think this line just too powerful for black. So knight c3, knight f6, g4. So like very, very, very nice uh, find for me. I mean, I was quite happy with this line. It seems like white is everywhere much better. So not a very serious line. Uh, here, so now we are switching to, well, really serious opening Benko Gambit. I'm, I know many players are not very happy with the Benko. Uh, they, they kind of like try to to avoid Benko because they don't like to play like you know a little bit passive in the opening even though they're pawn up. So uh, I find uh, this material very very important. So we we start with the like the there are actually many interesting sidelines nowadays in Benko. So the the first chapter uh, dedicated actually to some sidelines where Black is uh, playing some moves like e6 or. I, if I remember, like a6 capture and then e6, so all this stuff, something that you probably you, it's hard really to find somewhere the material on this topic, right? Because like uh, obviously, if you have the book which is uh, Ben Corporator for Black, they, they recommend the main lines, so uh, w where you find like good material, how white supposed to react after all these sidelines. So here's a like e6, you know, knight c3 and so on. So you, you can find all this here. So bishop a6, old fashioned, uh, old fashioned line, main, uh, so still, I would call it the main line of Benko. Here comes a big change to compare with my first edition. I decided to opt for like the line, which is very popular. Instead of playing Fianchetto, that was covered in my first edition, G3, Bishop, G2, I just believe that this is much stronger and this system, in my opinion, poses like very, very, very serious problems nowadays. So this setup, it's very easy to play. Queen B6, uh, it's not the main move, but everything is covered. Queen B6, Queen A5, Knight A6, every reasonable move. Knight D7, it goes without saying that Knight D7 is the main. So here was some... Uh, debate. I mean, I was debating between the move that Magnus played. I remember his game, like witnessing, uh, witnessing this game in Bill, where he played Queen e2 against Bologan. But I decided, after all, uh, to choose a4 move. It's a classical move, taking control over b5. After all, the idea to install knight to b5 first, obviously, protect e4. Uh, and uh, as I remember, one of the coaches in Soviet Union mentioned that in Benko, it's like one of the key positional ideas for white is to remove pieces from this big diagonal where bishop on g7 operates and then there will be no compensation so this line i believe from what i know from theoretical perspective very very problematic for black nowadays and this is the reason why black actually switched to so-called delay bishop a6 that's a modern line and as far as i know like different like new books on Benko repertoire, they recommend delaying bishop a6. The point of this line that here it's a lousy four. So now if you take bishop a6, we don't even need to play king f1 g2 artificially. We can castle normally, but that's not the point. So it's actually was for the first time played by Magnus, I think. Well, not for the first time, but when it's brought into attention of the, you know, strong player. So it's actually starts with castle. Uh, yeah, and here I have a very interesting move. I mean, the main move is knight f3 and then queen a5. That's the whole idea. So I decided actually uh, to get... Uh, so, so here I guess like knight, knight f3 is covered. So that's the line. So queen a5 comes. So there is a threat, obviously, knight a4. And then after bishop d2, only now uh, black captures bishop a6. Only now black captures bishop a6. Then after bishop a6, already queen a6 come and it's quite annoying. So, so the whole point of this a7 insertion, a, a remarkable move, was very happy to discover this move. That in this line now, if you go queen a5 and I play bishop d2, we have a threat knight b5. So there is no time for bishop a6. 
and obviously this setup loses its point. So instead, <clears throat> black mainly opts for instead of queen a5, e6 is the main move, so it's a little bit different type of play. Bishop e2, e5, uh, e5, e5, d6, castle, castle, and d different ideas, but usually it's knight a6. And well, th this is covered. I just, uh, I, I believe like white has a very promising play, but, but it's definitely something which is, uh, should be, I, I, I expect many more games in this line. So black will try to improve in this direction with e6. So Benko, like very, uh, very proud of my Benko coverage, to be honest. Like I changed my line from the first edition. Here, very interesting idea, a7, I believe, uh, great material. So here we have, uh, so the next is Budapest Gambit. Uh, I mean, obviously something that also like you just want to study like one really strong system and, and just to be good here. So. Uh, so you can see like it starts, yeah, it starts with some crazy idea that I even, I, I didn't know that it exists after e6, g3, e5. So this kind of like Benko Gambit. So somebody is claiming that g3 is not very useful move for Benko. So that's covered. I don't believe, I, I just decided, you know, instead of just defending the pawn, I go just for the free move, sacrifice the pawn, f4, and then enjoy like very nice space advantage. Uh, so it's, not not really serious system but something that you, you know like you know a few moves and you then you are not shocked in real game and you are not wasting too much time so sidelines uh, sidelines of uh, night g4 i i guess also here by the way uh, in 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 this chapter i'm pretty sure that there is a coverage of this knight a4 move uh so somewhere i mean i'm 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 struggling to find but i guess in the uh, in this d4 d4 knight f6 c4 e5 d5 knight e4 it's definitely covered here because i as far as i see the the next chapter we are talking about knight g4 already so which is the main line uh, after knight g4 my system remains the same bishop f4 i think like everyone knows this is the most challenging choice so some sidelines covered here as far as I understand such as d6 obviously main move in this position knight c6 so everything is covered here uh, well, in order not not to get mated somewhere, like everyone is, uh, everyone believes that Budapest Gambit is so dangerous that there could be potential mate somewhere. So, so here the main line and uh, one of the big, uh, one of the big discover discoveries of this line that it's it's actually, I, I'm sorry, let me get back and uh, come back to the system. It's actually yes, the this move actually. So we, we have this position. Yeah, this line that, that I just realized now I, I, I was a little bit wrong. So instead of bishop f4, my choice was knight f3. And then if there is chance, I was switching to bishop f4. And the reason for that, that I was concerned about g5 move in my previous edition. I, I thought that this move, well, at least in 2009 or 2008, promises black a good play. But now, uh, I found well, it's it's not me that played this move, but I realized that it's very strong because mostly I was focusing. I remember I analyzed Bishop G3, but actually Bishop D2 look, works extremely extremely well. Knight F3, and basically Black uh, Black is having serious problems in this line. So that's that's a big discovery. Black uh, Black is in trouble here. So we are not worried about G5. Then there is no reason for us. To allow knight f3 bishop c5 so basically we are entering here the main line which i really like for white it's usually just a very pleasant bishop pair advantage so for instance one of the lines it's it's captured here on d2 because otherwise after castle we might even uh, check on knight b3 or knight a4 ideas and bishop on b4 misplaced so quite often black well there is b6 obviously quite often black just captures here and then we play this position where it's it's very pleasant, very pleasant bishop pair advantage. I guess uh, it's not something that Budapest players are happy to defend. You know, Budapest players they play very aggressive chess. They want to give you mate. So that's not exactly what uh, they they would like to have and and to defend uh, against bishop pair. So next, uh, let let me go through other chapters. So here there is a coverage of. Uh, 
some tricky sidelines g6 d6 bishop g7 where uh, with my move order basically black can play moves like bishop g4 or c5 um, it, something that once again like it's hard a little bit to study and i find this line very very important just once again you study once and uh, you will be good for many years so uh, for instance one of the ideas that you know i i notice people concerned about so here there is this line where i go with knight a free move order and then knight c3 and c5 comes c5 comes and uh, after d5 bishop takes c3 bc3 f and then f5 that's a well-known line so very interesting approach for white i i would like to show you first of all fan kettle of course it's 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 pretty common in my repertoire queen a5 and knight d2 like there is no need to protect this pawn and, and place your bishop on d2 where it's like not the best position for sure basically we are quite happy if he takes because that would open the diagonal a1 h8 and and meanwhile knight d2 is useful for preparing uh for, for preparing e4 idea so well bishop d7 i guess with idea bishop a4 but in general so this is this is the line where we kind of like developed and we go e4 and then we obviously striving for opening up the bishop pair some some interesting find for me here like quite quite uh quite proud of my coverage of this line so main line so what we have the main line actually actually very tricky and very interesting line for black See, I I have uh, I have seen a lot of problems like for for like my students and players who are not really familiar with this uh, uh, with this tricky line. It's uh, like it's early e5, and then uh, what is happening instead of getting just a normal king senior, Black is able to develop the knight to e6, which looks more aggressive, right? The bishop on g7 still open, so we still play in the spirit basically of king senior and after ed4 knight d4 so that's a position like just imagine knight on f6 and that's one of the main lines of g3 fan keto system against king cindia here it comes knight c6 and very important line i i would encourage you to check so it's uh you know there are many sidelines but this line it's uh, it's very very interesting for black actually because just many players don't know how to react and black might get like a very nice play here uh so everything is covered in this line knight e2 it's it's always the situation always in fan keto systems is that white in the beginning has to play a lot of prophylaxis but once once white is able to neutralize black aggressive ideas he can really enjoy significant space advantage so very very important line uh, to cover so after after this the next uh, chapter it's called old indian so so here there is a coverage of uh, position after after knight c3 and as far as I see some sidelines bishop f5 and e5. I don't think bishop f5 is very serious, but well something to know. B bishop f5 is well met by a free, so very aggressive. You know, like if it's a sideline, I want to get advantage, so that's why a free or not something like just simple knight f3 or whatever. Uh, now after after e5 after e5 we obviously play knight f3 so there is this line obviously there is a knight d7 but it will be old indian covered in some other chapters uh, so if some interesting stuff yeah so it's actually here knight d7 and g3 so well most probably the player will switch to g6 and that will be just regular king's indian or bishop e7 here right bishop e7 and it's very very similar very much resembles king's indian fan keto so we play kind of like very very similar like e4 and h3 and everything so uh and and some ideas are uh, resembles a lot king Indian. just in many situations you'll see the only difference will be bishop uh stays on e7 located on e7 instead of g7 that's the whole difference so uh yeah like you can see it's it's basically the moves from uh king Indian variation as well so white is doing great I don't see any reason to deviate from this uh, great play. So here it's old Indian. So here like a very strange name. I'm, I mean, I'm not so strong in names. I mean, here the, there is a coverage of uh, a little bit some moves on uh, some deviations on move two in this position. So we have 
b6 so it's kind of like attempts to play some kind of like queen's indians that are a little bit uber so there is b6 move where we once again we play aggressive f3 and we get e4 where you can get d4 c4 e4 pawns so we we take this opportunity now and and uh, the second line here after e6 g3 my favorite catalan so to play b6 here well it still will be solid you know but you cannot play bishop b7 so you have to play either c6 or d5 in this position so c6 obviously allows e4 and white is clearly better here it's like not recommended line of course d5 i'm sorry d5 is just normal queen's indian pawn structure but i always tell students and everyone that this is the most favorable version of this pawn structure that white can get and white is always happy with this so classical pawn structure but white is very happy bishop f4 then uh so knight a6 like rook c1 and and so we have this kind of classical queen's indian play uh but very very pleasant play for white so here we have uh black knight tango so that means uh that, that means the main coverage is about knight c6 also the line let's say who knows how to play against this line yeah so we just play something and and then black gets some interesting active play so here like some knowledge appreciate so starting with knight f3 starting with knight f3 and every move is covered here d5 d6 e6 e6 basically transposed to similar to catalan positions so it will be it might be bishop before bogo indian or d5 catalan so that's probably like the easiest way after d5 well d5 is pr pretty much suspicious here so i felt like d6 after d6 we have knight c3 and uh, so like also very very challenging and obviously advantage for white so uh, and uh, and the last uh the last thing here is about some minor lines uh so starts with d6 uh so here interesting i i would like to mention that here i what was quite a significant change to compare with first edition so after d6 i decided to change in favor of c4 my first ed edition featured knight f3 which is i have no problems with this move but i just was kind of like in inspired but one very specific game um uh, dutch grandmaster lamy played against mamedyarov and he showed some like very nice setup that i really like so knight knight f3 there is nothing wrong about knight f3 but there is some independent theory here with bishop g4 knight f6 bishop g4 and so on so i decided just why not to study a new line c4 so obviously after c4 black plays c5 otherwise there is no independent value it probably will be king's indian or something e5 knight c3 and allowing uh, basically ed4 so which is the critical of course knight f6 is not the main move knight c6 and queen goes to d2 strange square but if you think that eventually we want to fianchetto to dark square bishop it makes a perfect sense so then queen on d2 rook can go to d1 right so and and i have uh, some coverage here so like with our very interesting sometimes we do like double fianchetto sometimes e4 uh, very interesting actually that that's a sideline so we we actually opt here for e4 it's not easy to memorize i mean i i haven't checked this line for a while it's it's not very popular so here for instance in this line there is e4 and bishop d3 knight e2 setup so this is one now somewhere if i'm not mistaken we have let's say if if g6 is played so we will opt for double fianchetto yes and and what i like about this that we potentially can develop our knight so in some lines so knight f3 here right but it could be knight h3 as well yeah knight h3 as well also very interesting bishop on g2 is open knight is heading to d5 eventually knight of 45 looks very nice um so this is d6 first move english defense it's a well it's a very serious opening I have a lot of respect to this opening. It's quite tricky. I noticed not many people know exactly what to play here. So e6, b6. Now uh, I'm a big believer of like the most ambitious e4. And now, for instance, here, I mean, bishop b7, bishop d3, I believe still remains more or less uh, favorable for white. But there is a, for instance, a latest word in this line is bishop b4. 
bishop b4, bishop d2, and and here comes later some d5 break, for instance, without bishop b7. So that's a uh, I notice how strong players lately handle this this line. So they 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 give check bishop b4, and and then early d5 comes. So let's say if we take on d5, so then maybe bishop will be useful on on the diagonal h3 c8. You know so. I had some idea. I, I I believe it was a very nice idea in this line um, after d5. So ac actually, it, it seems like I actually captured with the queen. Yes, I captured with the queen and played bishop d3. So I'm sorry, this the line. But anyway, that's the idea. Black black plays d5 in both cases. Bishop d3, knight c6. Uh, we we play after knight c6. Uh, we play cd5 and uh, yeah, this line. So. I had some ideas. There are like some developments. I think you 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 probably need to check for like most recent games. But uh, the the line overall seems quite interesting for white, quite interesting for now for white. But a lot of respect to b6 e6. You have to pay attention. It's quite tricky. So now, so here's the chapter with bishop before. It's kind of like very much like resembles obviously Bogo Indian, but maybe. Some ideas where white is delaying, black is delaying knight f6 and playing f5 first. So there is, there is this coverage with, uh, so here in this position, I played bishop d2. So after bishop b4, bishop d2, not knight d2 as we have seen. And and here, like in Bogo, the same, queen e7, c5, a5, bishop d2, all these four moves covered. Four moves covered, interesting play. There are some independent lines. So for instance, you can see here after queen e7, g3, f5. So obviously knight f6. We transpose to something that already covered through my Catalan book. So there is a five here, um, a five, and, and and there is this line. Overall, white is doing great still. I, I don't see any problems. So e6, bishop a4, quite popular line on the high level. Also could could be some tricky move further that you potentially might not be able to play your system that you play through regular uh, re regular bogo. So. Definitely deserves attention. So B pawns, B pawns. So that's a some sidelines that even to be honest in the beginning I even forgot to cover them and then I I got emails from uh, Andrew Greed, the guy who was working with me on this book. He said, "Well, you forgot to cover B6, B5. Should I? I mean, like really? I mean, who plays this? But you know, it's a uh, again, it's good. You know, like so. So here, not not only like B6, B5. I see also C6." You, you can see in this chapter uh, and the content, like there is a c6. You know, you need to know how to play in order to, to, to get the most promising position out of this opening and not to play something and allow, like, I, I, I would feel like a little bit embarrassed, like, uh, if somebody plays against me b5 and I'm not getting advantage, right? So I'm, that, that's my approach. If it's a sideline, I want to play a very powerful opening and just to, to crush my opponent. Uh, so that's B4, B pawn systems. So something similar with odd, uh, odd ideas. There are some, I think, so we have like first move E5. So that's like a very easy line where white just gets very big advantage. I, I, I think it's actually, it's, it remains the same. Doesn't, no changes to compare with first edition. So yeah. Uh, and E5. So we just take kind of like resembles a little bit Budapest, but it's much worse. It's much worse. So there is f6. I don't believe in this compensation. Usually connected with queen e7 and some tricky line here with queen b4. But if you know, it's actually this position is almost winning for white, to be honest. Not like knight comes to d5, queen b plays on b2. It's it's a terrible situation for black here. So so that was uh, that was e5. And uh, after d4, knight c6, much more reasonable. Uh, also could be some tricky transpositions, therefore independent line and very strong. So this is what I like about the sidelines. I want to find some like really powerful line. Uh, so for instance here, yes, for instance, there is end game, but end game is very unpleasant for black because knight placed on g6. So it's uh, definitely misplaced. Uh, and obviously white is having space advantage as well. So that's... Uh, chapter number 29 if i'm not mistaken so so there are like overall 29 chapters and uh well it's you know it's 600 pages uh, a lot of uh, 
unusual openings that you cannot really find coverage like too much coverage in uh, you know chess sources so that that what of the biggest values of my book and th that can I, I believe can take you like throughout like many years uh, with this knowledge of course like from serious openings you have uh, you, you have Dutch with the f all three systems Stonewall Leningrad and classical you have Benko you have e6 b6 and you have some tricky lines d6 g6 bishop g7 that sometimes confuse players so well guys I hope you enjoyed uh, highly recommend it if let's say you don't have uh, l l with you like laptop with the chess base files or the real copy forward chess app is very very convenient very very useful I mean great interface with a like text as well as like board uh, where you can play the moves I hope you enjoy and you you got some like idea what you can expect from uh, my book definitely recommend it uh, good luck I, I hope once you get my book you'll get a lot of wins thank you very much for your attention